Shares of Steel Dynamics in the green today, although off-session highs. It comes after the company released their Q3 earnings last night, beating analysts' expectations, saying demand remains solid and they expect it to remain that way into Q4 and next year. Joining us now in an exclusive CNBC interview is Steel Dynamics CEO Mark Millett. Mark, uh, good to see you. How are you doing? Good afternoon. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So, so, so let's touch first of all on, on the, the pricing that we're seeing at the moment. I mean, uh, you mentioned there that demand's expected to, to hold up. Can, can pricing remain quite as uh, lofty as it has been? Well, I think it, uh, it may turn over a, a little as we uh, get into uh, the, the first quarter, but I think it's absolutely solid through the rest of the year here. You know, the, the supply and demand balance, uh, it, it's very, very tight. Uh, demand is absolutely incredible, to be honest, through almost every sector that we're, that we're in. Uh, Non-residential, very, very strong, driven by uh, warehouse, you know, retail, uh, the change in retail buying from uh, the consumer, uh, driving, uh, uh, you know, the, the Amazon-type uh, uh, buildings, and then also uh, cloud computing is driving uh, warehouse space dr dramatically. So we're, we're seeing backlogs uh, at least about 10, 10 months out. And you talk to the builders, they're having problems with the labor. And all that's doing is delaying projects. And I think that will extend the, the, the construction cycle. You know, automotive is, is uh, still relatively strong. It's, it's suffering from the, the chip shortage. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, we, uh, it, the good news is you, you lost about four and a half million units during COVID. Uh, there's massive, massive pent up demand there. And if you talk to the dealers throughout the, uh, throughout the supply chain, uh, they just can't get enough inventory to sell. And that's going to ex extend the, uh, the cycle too. So it's good. Manufacturing is strong. Energy is recovering. So de the demand space is, is very, 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 very good. And, and so you don't feel that any of this could taper off as, as early as Q4 or Q1, Q2 next year uh, if the sort of post-pandemic bounce abates? Do you think there's quite a significant and lasting backlog? Yeah, I, I, as I said, I think it's going to turn over a little uh, in, the, in the first quarter. Uh, you know, the, the, the mill lead times are uh, shrinking a, a little bit. We're catching up. You know, we're, we're just uh, just part of the, uh, the the shock wave that we've we've seen from COVID. So the mills are catching up a little. Inventories are starting to rebuild from a historic lows. Uh, imports are kind of inching up a little. Uh, but you're not you're not going to see any any dramatic uh, surge in imports, which would be the only uh, the, the only major driver of uh, a material change in pricing. So a little turnover, but a very 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 high, uh, healthy healthy environment for us going forward. Mark, do you expect any change to the 232 tariffs, 25 percent on steel and aluminum, put in place by the Trump administration? A lot of friendlier vibe between the U.S. and Europe and the Biden administration. What do you think happens? Well, I think the obviously there are ongoing negotiations right now. We would anticipate that there will be uh, uh, some quota uh, mechanism uh, in place there to stop a surge of imports. You know, the country is is uh, generally still short. We need imports as as a rule. We just don't need a surge of imports. So as long as they uh, when they renegotiate that, there, there's there's uh, uh, some some safeguards there. I don't think we'll, we'll have a problem. For, uh, for the rest of the world, I, I think there's been constructive dialogue by the, uh, the, the Biden administration. They recognize that there's colossal uh, overcapacity driven principally by, uh, by China and other Asian company, uh, countries that are, that are sort of export economies. So they recognize the problem. Yeah, we're having a great, uh, uh, a great time right now in, in our business. Uh, but the, uh, the underlying drivers of global, global overcapacity is still there, and they recognize that.